Hi everybody, it's Andrea here from Splash Photography. Um, just connecting with you again today. It's been two weeks since our last um, live Facebook live broadcast. And uh, a couple of weeks we were talking about uh, things that uh, would, were pertaining more to an engagement session uh, when it comes to pl wedding planning and engage engagement session planning. So today I just want to make sure that I'm uh, connecting with you on a different topic, but also something very pertinent to weddings. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about um, some things that you can do or plan for so that when it comes to your wedding day morning, you have things go nice and smoothly for you. So um, some of the things that um, I'm going to talk about a little bit today are going to include hire, making sure that you hire the right team of professionals. Um, and then I also want to talk a little bit about making sure that you take care of yourself on the morning of your wedding day. So a lot of people have so much on their mind that they just kind of forget about the like the bare basics of what you need to get through any regular day. Um, and another thing that we're going to talk about a little bit today is setting your expectations for the wedding day and the morning of the wedding day so that you don't necessarily um, set your expectations to a point that is like unattainable. And uh, I just want you to give yourself a little bit of room, wiggle room for, um, for things to potentially happen and how to deal with them. Um, the last thing I'm going to talk about, which is really uh, more pertinent to me, is... Uh, how to plan for the photography on the wedding day um, in the morning. So there's some things that you can do to plan ahead of time to let us know, like to or to help us work through the best photos uh, for you and how to make sure that we get those for you. So we're just definitely going to talk a little bit about that as well. Um, if you happen to be watching, I would love it if you would say hello so I know that there is somebody out there watching. If not, you don't necessarily need to be watching live right now. You can also watch the video later on. Uh, you can definitely watch it um, afterwards. It'll be here on, um, on Facebook so you can get the information then as well. Um, so I love that uh, people are connecting with it. I got a lot of comments last time. If you have questions as well as we're watching through, as you're watching through and we're talking about the considerations for your wedding day, um, if you have questions, just put them in the comments as well and I'll do my very best to make sure that we answer those today as well. So um, throw your questions in there. I'll answer the questions nearing the end. So I'm hoping this video will probably be like 10 to 15 minutes. I'm trying to condense it a little bit from the last time we chatted. So um, hopefully I'll get through all the information. So um, yeah, so I'm just going to get started. I think uh, there's a few people watching now, so that's awesome. Welcome, guys. Thanks again. Feel free to say hello and uh, just tell me you're here if you, if you want to. Um, so first off, one of the first points I want to talk about today is that um, you really need to make sure that you hire a good set of professional people to help you out on your wedding day. Um, so some of the things that we're doing um, or that we're seeing is that sometimes people are just trying to to scale back on some things just to either meet a budget or they just think they can do things on their own and it just ends up causing a little bit of stress in the long run. So you want to start your wedding day off really on the right foot. You want to make sure that you're not um, creating any um, any problems right off the bat for yourself. There's going to be a lot going on on that day so you want to make sure that you're definitely uh, taking all that into consideration. Some of the, the people that you should have hired for that um, for that day of is you definitely want to have a photographer there um, to capture the the moments on the day of um, a lot of people do also hire videographers which is a wonderful way to capture your wedding day as well so um, we work together we are capturing a lot of the same moments but there's different feels to capturing videography of the wedding as opposed to photography and I think both are really important it's a really important day um, that you're not going to get to do uh, more than this day so you really want to make sure that you want you have it captured in all the ways that you can hey Laura <laughs> great to see that you're here thanks for tuning in um, and then also as far as um, as your appearance goes on the wedding day, there's always considerations for a hairstylist and a makeup artist. Um, sometimes I know people will try to do their own makeup or maybe even try to do their own hair, but it, it's already a day that there's so much going on. There's so much you need to think about that you really should just trust a professional to come in and take care of doing your hair. If there's something that's not working right, they know how to fix it. They can make it a little bit, uh, a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller. Uh, so definitely you, can, you want to consider having a professional hair stylist and a professional makeup artist there with you on the wedding day. Um, another great consideration is to make sure that you have transportation um, organized well ahead of time. Now I know a lot of people 
will get will end up getting themselves um, rides from friends or family members. It's also a great idea to get a limo or um, get kind of a chartered car or something to, to take you to your wedding. Then you just know somebody's there just to drive you around for the day. So you don't have to worry about, oh, where's this person? Whose car are we driving in? You just have somebody there to take care of it. And it just takes that stress off of wondering how you're going to get to point A or from point A to point B. You can actually arrange for somebody to come pick you up at the end of the night. So you don't have to worry about how you're going to get back to your hotel or if you're going directly to the airport. Um, you, you have all that arranged ahead of time. So just make sure you have the right professionals in place. Um, Another consideration is to think about your florist and your decor person as well. Um, the person's of decorating your hall, um, the florist. We want to make sure that your flowers get to the right place in the morning. They get to the groomsman as well and, and the groom um, and that you have enough time to get everything uh, where it needs to be before we start doing photos. So a professional florist will know this. They'll know that they need to get the flowers there a little bit ahead of time so that they're there for when you do photos. And thanks for tuning in, Lena. <laughs> um, so yeah, so we're going to definitely talk a little bit more about those, those aspects. Um, but one of the main points that I wanted to bring up here is that if you have all these professionals working together, you need to make sure that they're on the same page as far as timeline goes. So you want to make sure that you've put together a timeline. I know with all my clients, we sit down ahead of the, ahead of the game, ahead of the wedding, usually anywhere from a month or two months before, and we go through the timeline for the day. And I type up an agenda, I send it to them, and just make sure that we're all on the same page. Often they'll send that agenda to their limo driver or to... Um, their videographer or whoever else they're working with. And then that way we know this is how much time we have for each section of the day. Um, one of the, the strongest things that I've found that has kind of thrown things behind um, in the morning of is, is that um, we need to make sure that your hair and makeup gets done um, in a quick time, a, a fairly quick time, at, not necessarily quick, I guess, because uh, you can't do that stuff quick. Um, but you definitely want to make sure that it gets done in time for you to have some time to get the photos done before your ceremony is going to take place. So schedule out who's going to go when, how long it's going to take to do everybody's hair and makeup. Um, make sure, I know a lot of makeup artists like to do the bride's makeup last. I don't necessarily, hey Lindsay, ah, I love it. Um, I, I know a lot of brides don't necessarily, or makeup artists don't like to have the bride done too early with makeup, but... I do, I don't really, I don't love the idea of the bride being done last just because oftentimes makeup runs behind and um, we're the limo's showing up and the bride's still getting her makeup done. So I always suggest that the bride goes at least second to last, um, if not third to last, just so that um, we can start photos, they can get into their dress and everything, and we have a little bit of time before the limo gets there and they have to take off to go to the church. So if things do tend to run a little bit behind, I think you definitely want to make sure that you are not the last person sitting there in the chair when everybody else is standing there ready and they're all waiting for, for you. It's, it's a kind of a stressful feel. Um, so that's a, just a little tip that I found from experience. Sometimes I've shown up places and they've said, oh, we were going to have our hair and makeup done by 11 a.m. And I get there and the bride hasn't even sat in the makeup chair yet. So I know there's still like a good half hour, 45 minutes before she's even going to be done. So something to keep in, um, something to keep in mind. Hey, Sonia. Ah, so nice to hear from you. That's awesome. Um, so yeah, so that's one of, the, one of the points that I think you need to think about in the morning just to make sure that you're not the last person. Um, the next thing I'm, I want to go on to is how important it is to really take care of yourself on your wedding day. Um, so little things that people don't think about is like eating, <laughs> eating breakfast and making sure they have water and they're hydrated. This day is a long day. So like you're going to be up probably at like 6 a.m. and you're still going to be up at 2 a.m. in the morning potentially. And um, you're so busy, you get up and you get going that sometimes people forget to eat. They forget to have um, like just even a, they'll drink some coffee or something, but that's not necessarily going to hydrate you. So you want to make sure you're drinking water and just taking good care of yourself. Another tip I always tell people, and this is sometimes impossible, but try, try, try to get a decent night's sleep before you, um, 
before the night before the wedding. I know there's a lot of nerves and there's a lot of excitement and whatnot, but just it would be great if you just try to get a little bit of sleep. Hey, Cindy, thanks for tuning in. Great to hear from you. Um, so yeah, I do definitely want you to, to encourage you to get a good night's sleep because you're going to have a big, long day and you definitely want to make sure that you have something to eat. Some other little tips that you might want to think about that, so you don't want to think about them the day of the wedding, little things like make sure you charge your phone <laughs> the night before. Plug it in, charge it. Um, Make sure that it's fully charged because that day you're going to be taking selfies and taking video and you're going to be, you guys are going to be on your phone nonstop. You're probably not going to get a chance to stop and charge your phone at any point in time. So make sure it's got a full charge in the morning. That will help you out with communicating with everyone as well. One less thing to think about on the morning of. Um, a couple other things that I, I've um, mentioned to some people is to try and get some of the things, these last minute things done the day before. I have shown up and I'm actually guilty of this myself, the day of the wedding, writing out pieces of my wedding speech. And that's crazy because you've got so much going on and you're trying to think of this heartfelt speech and talking to people. Um, but uh, talking to people about your emotions and how special everything is and you're cramming it into this morning. So try to get some of those things taken care of ahead of time if you can. Um, I always tell you to pack, pack water, pack snacks, make sure that you've got everything that you need with you to make sure that you can, you, you're not going to pass out from not having any, any nourishment through the day. Um, another little tip is for brides, make sure that you pack up a second pair of shoes because you are going to need them uh, come the reception. Uh, most of the shoes that I see these days on brides are so drop dead gorgeous, but not so comfortable. So you might want to make sure that you have um, a pair of flip flops or some flats or something that you can dance the night away in later. So just kind of preparing for those things and having a bag packed for that. I also talk, uh, have mentioned to, and this is a great, actually a great tip to come more from a wedding planner than myself, but to have some sort of an emergency kit together that you can use on the morning of the wedding day and throughout the day that you can take with you. So it never fails that we are going to need a safety pin at some point or um, two-sided tape. Um, there's other little things like um, Q-tips come in handy to just like help to adjust lipstick and, and stuff like that. Um, little, little things that you, you think you could need. And there's great resources online that you can actually tap into and uh, just look up what should be in a wedding day emergency kit and just carry that with you. And you're going to be set. If you need something, you've got it. And then you don't have to worry about it throughout the day. Um, so just, those are some other tips that you want to think about to make sure that the morning goes nice and smoothly. Just remember to eat. Uh, remember to keep your spirits up. And, uh, and you can, can't do that if you don't have some nourishment in you. So um, my, my third point that I was going to talk about was to try and make sure that you keep your goals for the day um, or your expectations for the day reasonable. So um, what... One, I, I know we all have, we all envision this perfect wedding day and like when we deserve that, we should have that perfect wedding day, but realistically there is going to be a hiccup somewhere. So don't let it ruin your day. Um, I definitely think that you need to, you definitely want to make sure that you, um, sorry, I just got a little train <laughs> off my train of thought there. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you are, um, oh. Oh my goodness, I'm so sorry. I've totally lost my train of thought. I was reading a question here and then I totally got off my, my thought all the time. Okay, so back on it. I've got it here. So one thing that you, you want to think about here is that like children, if you have children in your wedding, um, you cannot, you can't guarantee the way that, the, that your children are going to act during the, um, during the ceremony or during the morning. I've had some times where people want to get specific photos with the kids and the kids just don't cooperate all the time. And that's just kids. Kids are kids. Like we can't expect the world of them. And if that doesn't happen, you just got to shake it off. You, we have like, we definitely want to work towards getting the things that we want, but we can't always make these things happen. So we're just, you just got to kind of have a laid back attitude about some of the things that you can't control. Another thing is the weather. So it's so good to make sure that you have a plan in place of what you're going to do for the weather. Um, if it should be a miserable day out. So kind of like today, <laughs> if it's pouring and windy and wet, you don't necessarily want to be, um, taking photos outside on the beach. Uh, but you do want to make sure that you have a backup plan of where you're going to do things for the weather. So just know that 
you can't dictate the weather. You can't make it. I mean, I know you probably know that, but you can't make it anything that it, that it's not. So you have to just kind of embrace what you've got. If you've got great professionals in place, they are going to take care of you to make sure that you guys are going, that you guys are going to have a good day. Um, regardless of the weather, you can still get some of my most beautiful photographs that I've ever captured. My favorites are in the rain. Um, video is beautiful when you can see that rain coming down. Um, I know like makeup artists do extra things to make sure that your makeup stays on better when it's, when there's a little bit more of a humid day and whatnot. So just trust your professionals that they're going to take care of you and, and embrace the day as it is. Um, so a couple other things that I like to suggest is to make sure that you give yourself a little bit of wiggle room in your timeline. So when I get there in the morning and I'm, I'm uh, planning on starting to take photographs and whatnot, um, if things are already running behind, then we kind of know, okay, well, we, we have to be at the, you know, we have to be getting in the limo, or they have to be getting in the limo at this time. We have to get to the church at this time. But if you've planned for like an extra 20 to 30 minutes in there of just time where you didn't really have anything scheduled, it's not going to be a big deal if you're running, you know, 15 minutes behind because you had that wiggle room. Whereas if you don't have that little bit of extra wiggle room in your morning, you are going to start to feel anxious and stressed out about everything. And that's the worst way to start off such an amazing day. Um, so this day should just be filled with joy and happiness and, and uh, as little stress as possible. So yeah, um, just a couple other things. One other tip that I often give as well is to think about um, the payments that you're giving to your vendors. And I think Lindsay commented on this, but I can't quite see the comment anymore. Um, so uh, make sure that if you're if you have payments outstanding to your vendors, a great thing to do is is to pay them either ahead of time if you trust to do that, um, or um, if a payment's due on the wedding day. I for myself, I collect my last payment when I actually deliver the photos after the wedding. Um, I don't like dealing with dealing with uh, cash transactions or check transactions or anything on the wedding day. But it's good if you have um, have taken care of some of those things ahead of time because then you don't have to worry about passing out checks and whatnot on the day of. However, if they require that you pay on that day, you can have all those checks and everything put aside in an envelope and you can give them to like maybe your your father-in-law or whoever and, and ask them to take care of those payments for you so you don't have to worry about paying all of those things ahead of time. Um, one other thing, so the next topic that I want to talk about is photo planning. So this is kind of where, I, these are all tips that I'm giving you today about different things that you can consider for making your morning go a little bit more smoothly on your wedding day. Um, so there's lots of little tips that you can do, but my obviously specialty is in the photography side of things. So take everything that I've said up to now is with a grain of salt, because I'm obviously not a full out wedding planner. I've just seen a lot of weddings. So I'm just giving you the tips I know. Um, as far as photo planning goes, I, when I show up to photograph the getting ready details on the day of the wedding, I usually want to make sure that that uh, we get all of the details. Um, so like the rings, if the bride has them or the group, wherever we happen to be starting the shoes, um, for the, for the bride's place, we want to have the dress, the garter, the jewelry. Um, if you have an invitation that we can, we can use for some of the, the details. Um, we want to photograph those items in a brightly lit, so nice natural light area. Um, and clean area. A lot of times we'll use the top of a bed, we'll use a table, um, or just even a surface. We we'll, sometimes we'll use the floor. It just depends. But we we really we're looking for the best light. And if you can have all of those details that you want for the detail shots kind of in one area, it's going to help us get through that a lot quicker than coming back to you and saying, oh, do you have this? Do you have this? And then you having to run and look for it. So if you just kind of throw all that stuff in one specific area, and then when we get there, we can take those photos and you know exactly where everything is. Um, a few other things is to ha we want to have an idea of what photos you want on the morning of your wedding. So if you've gone out and gotten robes for all of your girls to wear and you want a photo of all the girls in robes, then that's something that you need to communicate to us. And they, the girls should be in those robes when we get there so we can get that photo kind of right off and then the girls can start getting ready. So um, often I suggest the girls um, will get those getting ready shots as far as in the robes and, and hair and makeup um, when we get there. But then I will suggest that the girls go get into their dresses shortly after we get there, just because then they can be fully dressed and look awesome uh, when the bride's getting dressed. So that's another little uh, tip that I would 
suggest is right after you get those kind of before getting dressed photos, get the girls to get dressed. Mom, mom of the bride as well can get dressed. And then they are all looking nice and dressed while the bride is getting into her dress and we're getting those nice photos there. Um, what else do I have on here? Uh, so just another note that ideally in the morning of the wedding, we want the parents to be where the bride is getting ready and where the groom's getting ready too, because it's great moments there that we can get the dad seeing, uh, we can get dad seeing um, the bride for the first time. We can get mom seeing her son as a groom for the first time. It's just good emotional moments to get in photographs. Hey, Jill, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Um, and then a few other things that I'd like to, to um, talk about as far as just being prepared goes, um, I want to make sure that you know that for the most part, we're, what we're getting in the morning, most of our photography that we're getting is going to be candid moments. Um, but once you're all ready, we'll, ta we'll typically take you outside or even inside to a nice area and we'll do those photos with your uh, parents um, there at, at your home or at the hotel or wherever you're getting ready. Um, and then from there, uh, we'll make sure that we get any other additional photos that we have time to get before heading out um, to the to the actual ceremony. So um, those are most of the points. I'm just going to do a quick run through here. Sorry, I'm probably looking at the top of my head here. Um, oh, one last point I wanted to bring up about the getting, the getting ready photos in the morning is if you are, a lot of brides and grooms are giving each other gifts um, the morning of. And these can be great photo ops for us. Um, so sometimes I'll ask you, I'll just ask you guys to wait to give those gifts to each other until the morning of when we're arriving. Um, if you don't necessarily want to see them at that moment, then that's cool. Um, we can do that then. If you want to be there while they open it, obviously do what you want to do there. Um, but it's a great, we get some really great moments just capturing everybody looking at their gifts and sometimes some really emotional moments. And um, if the same thing goes if you're giving, if a bride is giving her bridesmaids a bunch of gifts um, to, to, for being a part of the wedding day. If you want to actually uh, include that in the photos as well. It's great if you give those out when we get there. Um, so you could do that when the girls are in their robes, if they're wearing robes, or even once they're in their dresses. Um, and then we will get do the same thing with the guys beforehand as well. So those are a few of the tips that um, I have. I probably missed a few things, but I think that should be pretty good. Um, if you guys have any other questions, um, does anyone have any questions? Feel free to, to ask them. I'm, Unfortunately, I can't see them all right now, but um, if you guys do have more questions about anything, you put them in the feed below. I will definitely answer those. I'll be following the feed. And if you feel like this video would be useful for anyone you know that might be getting married and just wants to have considerations for the morning of their wedding day, uh, definitely share it with them. And um, we'll be back in two weeks again here on the Splash Photography Facebook page. We're going to do another video on a different topic, probably wedding related to, and I'm actually going to try and get a couple of um, guests in here from time to time to actually chat about different topics as well. So if you have suggestions and things that you'd like to hear about or um, ask questions about, please let me know and um, we will definitely make sure that we check into those and we'll try and do our best to, to give you the information that we can. So thanks so much guys for tuning in. Um, I was going to do Q and A, but I don't think I, I don't think that I've seen any questions come up. Um, but if I've missed anything, I'll definitely answer it in the feed below. So thanks again. Have a great day. And, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Take care.